So I want to start with, uh, I really enjoyed this movie. And I think that one of the reasons is because the second act didn't have something stupid about you two falling apart and then having to get back together. I like that you guys were best friends through the whole movie. Can you sort of talk about that aspect of the script? Yeah, I agree. I absolutely love that. I think that there are certain tropes that people feel that they have to include when the when the project is about two women. And, and I think that we're at the point where we have collectively evolved past that. Like what is, I think thrilling to watch is when I see friendship that looks and feels real to me and my friendships are honest, they are raw, you know, they're kind of weird, they're quirky, we have such a good time together and I don't necessarily want to see anything about two women fighting over a man or women uh, falling out just for the sake of it because that's what we do. Like, I think what's really nice is seeing, really watching a film and being presented with something that shows kind of the reality and the depth of female friendship, which is when you have someone who is in, they are all in, even if that means like taking it to a criminal level. <laughs> uh, I, and of course I have to ask you both, how much did you actually know about extreme couponing? Because I knew about, uh, I think I knew about it a little, but not to the extent of what I've learned in the last week. I knew a fair amount. I'll say I probably knew more than you. I learned a lot on this film, but my grandmother was an extreme couponer. And, you know, leaning from her, even when I was 11 years old, there in the basement of her home, it was completely bare, totally clean, but the perimeter had uh, cut at shaved down cardboard boxes and inside each was a different company's uh, UPC barcode label. And the, um, my whole family was responsible for clipping all of our barcodes off of the soup and the toothpaste and the cereal and sending them to her. And she'd gather a hundred of, of them. She'd send them to the detergent company and say, look what a loyal customer I am. They would send her five bucks and say, thanks so much for your patronage. And with those teeny tiny $2, $5 checks, she started college funds for her five grandkids. Wow. Yeah. Wow. I, I did not know, and that is um, amazing and also crazy at the same. It's like amazing. Like I, you know, um, Kirby, I have to ask you an individual question because uh, I am so excited about Sandman, and I'm just wondering, with you cast as Death, does that mean that Death is British? Death. Uh, well, I'm British. I, I don't know that the um, the sort of like cosmic entity of Death is is bound to any place on this earth but i am british so in this in this iteration yeah death is death's a brit in this for this one totally um i just had to i had to work in something on that series i'm sorry but for getting back into why i get to talk to you guys um in the, this project i always love learning about like the behind the scenes of the making of a movie something that might surprise people to learn what do you for each of you what do you think might surprise people to learn about making this film Although we did it at the height of uh, COVID, really the height of COVID, went, but like that peak where everything was terrible and then we knew nothing about coronavirus at all. So we were just doing all the things. Everyone had masks and goggles and we're six feet apart and separated by partitions. And some people were wearing gloves and no more than 10 people in a room. And every hour, everyone left the room and all the windows were open and a giant air scrubber was brought in and they scrubbed and turned the air and then they Lysoled everything. And then we'd wait 10 minutes and be able to walk back in and shoot. Like it was, the, the, the reality behind the scenes shooting in COVID was was crazy. It was crazy. I mean, the reality of what it was is something that should probably have a film made about it because it was absurd. Yeah. At some point. It was it was it was truly unbelievable. It was nothing that anyone has ever experienced before. And we did it and we had actually had a lot of fun doing it, which is kind of crazy because there was a lot going on. Yeah, given all of those weird things, Kirby had mentioned this before and it occurred to me that I agree that th those weren't, there's not, those aren't my first memories when I think about Queen Pins. Like just the fun I had with Kirby and the filmmakers is what I think about, not the fact that we were in hazmat suits. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, on that note, I got to stop. I hope it's a huge hit for you guys. Thank you so much for your time. Thanks, Steve.